שלום. שלום. Happy to see you all. This is Shalom. A prayer festival today. Shalom means peace be with you. I wish you all have peace from the Lord. Let's greet each other now by saying Shalom. 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 We are here to celebrate Jesus' love with the songs of praise. Today, I would like to share with you, with you a short message. First, here are a few questions. How would you describe your life in Boston? Is it fantastic, promising, or bad, terrible, even miserable? If you answered fantastic or promising, congratulations on your good progress. I pray for your continued success in the Lord. Or does your life seem bad, terrible, or miserable? I pray for your consolation and peace in God. By the way, do you know where can you get the best advice for your life? Some people say working harder is the answer to success. But is this advice right? Working hard is usually considered a good verge by many, including people in Korean society. But I am sorry to say the ambiguity of tomorrow's life will never guarantee success, no matter how, how hard you try. Do you know what will happen tomorrow? Do you truly think your hard working can surpass that of others? Within one month of staying in Boston, many people realize, wow, there are too many smart people here, and I cannot surpass them. Also, life is too uncertain. We have all heard of many tragic accidents, such as the Boston bomb terror, 9-11 terror, and others. Just two months ago, I received a prayer request from a good Christian who lived in Daejeon in Korea. This young deacon asked me to pray for his safety, peace, and vision during his postdoc program in Germany. Living and studying in Germany was a reward for his family because he had worked so hard. After being acknowledged for his good virtues by his research center, he landed on this postdoc program in Germany. So many colleagues of prayer groups and myself prayed for his safety and happy start and new life in Germany. As he is a smart guy, he asked pray support from many good Christians. One month later, his family got a chance to go on a trip to Mont Blanc. As he has two little children, they took a cable car in French Alps. It was September 9th. You can guess how wonderful the trip was, the beautiful scenery of Alps and the cable car smoothly moving above 12,500 feet of altitude gave his family really fantastic feeling. Everything was, it was a wonderful family trip. At the time, three cable, car, three cable cars were walking in the air. Suddenly, all three cable cars were stuck at the altitude 12,500 feet of altitude. Just guess, it was too high to rescue by ladder. It could only call for rescued by helicopter. This had, this had never happened in the last 40 years. There were a total 110 people stuck in the air in three cable cars. This young Deacon family was in shock at what was happening. 
especially this 10 years old girl received lots of stress. He tried to receive her and called the police several times. Unfortunately, he had limited knowledge of French. His PhD, wonderful research wizard, and happy family could not solve this problem. They were stuck in cable car for 17 hours. If you were in the same situation, what would you have done? Do you believe that the intelligence could have rescued the family? Do you still believe that working hard is the answer of all life's problems? The only way to solve this terrible problem was waiting for help, true help, miraculous help. That's all. Just guess. If you have a similar situations beyond your ability, your best solution will be waiting for the true help, real help. Bible is the answer to all our problems. Bible says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 121. The Deacon family waited for true help. Thank the Lord, all families were finally rescued without any injury after being stuck for 17 hours in error. After passing terrible moment, they had a memory to cherish for life. What a miserable happening became something from a scene of a movie. Many people cannot see what they could actually see. We call these people normal people. Some people can see what they can see only. We call them smart guys. Some guys can see with effort what they would not normally see. We call them genius musician, wonderful scientist, or prodigy. Some guys can see through Bible what they cannot see now. We call them blessed people. Let me explain this analogy with, us, with an example from science. Do you know a German chemist named Justus von Lichy? Maybe not. He suggested a very famous theory of plant growth that was called law of minimum. According to this law, even though there were high nutrients, plant growth was regulated by law of minimum nutrient. That means the growth of plant was dramatically affected by the lowest content of essential factors, even though there are plentiful nutrients. It was very interesting observation and theory. His theory was not obvious to ordinary people because people are not plant. By this theory can give us some insight into, into what truly makes for our happiness and vision. Even though you may have a good health, wonderful research, money, or others will not be happier because you have more. Otherwise, your happiness and future are related to your low dignity, low pride, low self-esteem, or bad experience. If you, have, if you have unsolved anger or remorse from your simple past, your future vision will be stopped despite your hard working, higher degree, or others. Just guess. If you have a beautiful perfume boxed up with rotten fish, 
What smell can you expect from the perfume box? Wonderful smell or bad smell? Unless you remove the rotten fish from the box, you will smell bad or odor from that. Life is similar to that. Even though your life seems wonderful, if there are rotten fish, your life will not smell good. If you want to solve your unsolved problem, you have to know what the best way is for your true and blissful future. If you know the way of your life, you can be released from your agony and wounds. Bible says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. How can we come to Jesus? Do we need money to come to Jesus? Do we need more special knowledge or experience? If we want, if we want to really, if we want to really lead of all your life burdens, the Lord Jesus Christ told you this. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, I'll give you rest. Matthew 12, Matthew 11, 28. Some say, I cannot see Jesus. Then, how do I come to him, Jesus Christ? When you read the Bible and understand the meaning of the Bible, you can meet the Jesus. The Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and light of my path. Psalm 119, 105. The church can always help you understand the meaning of the Bible. Good Christians can help you guide you to Jesus. Reading Bible, having good fellowships, attending service and receiving God's grace will lead you to understanding the true meaning of God's providence. When you understand God's purpose for you and when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you will understand the truth and that truth will give you a new life. The Bible says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. John 8, 32. Someone said, they believe in God, but still they have many problems in their life. What shall we do? As you said, you believe in God, please be patient and confident in the Lord. The Lord will give you true help in His time, not my time. It's not mind control, but it is His strong promises. Bible says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10 If you know the hardship, if, the, if you know the meaning of a hardship in your life, those turmoils make you more pure and strong. Bible says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I come forth as God. John 26, 10. What is God's purpose for you in this world? Okay. What is God's purpose for you in this world? It is, it is the will of the Lord to give you peace even in the most difficult situation. Even though you have a most difficult situation, God's will and purpose is to give you peace. 
Bible says, peace, be, peace I link with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Dear beloved sister and brothers in Jesus, please remember, please remember when you have a hard time, you are not alone here. You are not alone here in Boston. Jesus Christ is your true and only your helper. With this confidence of God's word, we can enjoy this life even though it may talk. At the case, we can say, as the Bible says, be joyful always. First Thessalonians 5.16. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that you are our only helper and savior. Please give us your wisdom and confidence to overcome this uncertainty. Dear Lord, as there are non-believers and baby Christians who don't know God's true will, please grant them your mercy so that they can know you. Grant them wisdom so that they can know your love and enjoy the heavenly blessings in you. Oh dear Lord, please change our lives so that we may show grace, mercy, and love to one another and to the weak and poor of this world. Thank you, Lord. We pray in your holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.